214-282-7701. That's the cell. You could leave a message on the home phone, but I'm rarely there, so why bother? Just call on the cell. <clears throat> Sitting at my desk years back, I realized all of a sudden I was getting ready to make one of those horrible mistakes a storyteller always hates to make. I was about to forget a performance. One of those after-school ones starts about 3.30 in the afternoon. I jumped up from my desk when I realized what I was doing, and I ran for the bathroom. And there was my little grandson that I was raising. One bathroom house. Christopher, who had only recently graduated from trainer pants to what he thought of as being big boy underwear, was ensconced on the porcelain throne. I came running in the door and I said, I'm not looking at you, and you don't have to look at me. You can pretend like I'm not there, but Granny has to get ready to go to a gig. He didn't say a word. He's looking down between his legs. I said, just pretend I'm not here, and I, I gotta brush my teeth, I've got to go. I'm scrubbing wet my teeth, and I hear this little voice say, I have grapes. I thought, well, being raised by a woman, it's entirely possible that there are parts of his anatomy for whom, for which he has no words yet. I have to fix that, but not right now. I'll tend to that tomorrow. Right now, I've got to get out of here. I keep on brushing my teeth. He says, pretty grapes. I thought, well, he's proud of his body. That's a plus. He says, I have an apple, too. I went. <laughs> he was very carefully examining his Fruit of the Loom underwear. <laughs> but even when it's the second generation that you have raised, they grow up so fast that in the blink of an eye, it seemed to me like he was leaving home. No, it didn't seem to me like he was leaving home. He was really leaving home. It seemed like it had been the blink of an eye. I never had a child leave home before. Not really leave home. The generation before him, they just rolled out the door down the street a half a block or so and took up residence quickly enough and soon enough and close enough that they could just come home and raid the refrigerator and use my washing machine. <laughs> I never had a child really leave home. I was unprepared. I wondered why we have all those stories about Jack going to seek his fortune and not a single story about his mama. Staying behind. Why is that, I wonder? Hmm. And so Christopher, who had gotten a wonderful graduate assistantship at the University of Tennessee, rented the biggest U-Haul truck they make. And behind it, he attached a flatbed trailer on which he was hauling his car. And the end result of that was longer than the average 18-wheeler. And having never driven a truck before in his entire life, but with the absolute certainty of a young man in his 20s, he got on the interstate and set off from Dallas, Texas to Knoxville, Tennessee without a backward glance. We had the biggest fight we've ever had in our lives just as he was going out the door over whether or not he should take the paperwork for the rental truck with him on the trip. And because I am who I am, when he went to the bathroom one last time, I sneaked out to the truck, opened the glove compartment, and stuffed the paperwork in and then ran. <laughs> so I was standing on the front porch and butter wouldn't melt in my, life, my mouth by the time he came out and got in his car, and I watched him drive away. Five hours later, the phone rang. Granny? Yes, Chris? The truck has a flat. What do I do? 
Well, if you open the glove compartment, you will find the paperwork for the rental. And on the bottom, there is an 800 number. And if you call that number, they will come and change the tire. That's their responsibility. Oh, cool. Click. <laughs> and so because I thought it was more dignified to write a poem than it was to run after that truck, I wrote this that day. And so Jack goes to seek his fortune. His mama stands and waves him out of sight. Child of her old age, an unbidden gift. She sheds no tear until he moves beyond that first bend in his bright road. He is a good boy and knows those things that can be taught by telling. Nine nines are 81. Yes, ma'am, no, sir, and where those elbows do not go. She has seen to that. But does he know those things you cannot tell, but only teach by living? How forgiveness and gratitude can flow across your heart like water over stone. That a dream is always worth the risk. And can he learn to love himself enough to make a sweet life in that new place? A place she cannot go. A place he will soon call home. Thank you.